Here are 10 facts about these majestic creatures. Everything about a snow leopard is adapted for living in cold, high altitude environments. Firstly, its paws, which are massive, since being large helps these animals walk on the snow by spreading their weight so they don't sink as much, essentially their snowshoes. A snow leopard also has around 3 to 5 inches of fur on its belly to trap heat energy, small ears to help it lose as little heat as possible, and its tail, when not used to balance on mountainsides, helps the cat stay even warmer. They are even seen to chew on their tails to keep their faces warm, it's very adorable. Even their nasal cavities are adapted to high cold climates. It's particularly deep so the animal can take deep breaths to get as much oxygen as possible, and they also have specialised sinuses to warm up the cold air coming in. Snow leopards can't roar, they can only hiss and growl like domestic cats, even though they are considerably larger. It is thought that they lack this ability because of the absence of certain features in their larynx that only cats that can roar possess. The larynx is a part of the throat that houses the voice box and vibrates to make different pitches, so snow leopards do not possess any part that can make a roar. Snow leopards are very antisocial and live a solitary life until it comes to breeding. Snow leopards also shy away from humans, making it incredibly hard to study their behaviour. They are known as ghosts of the mountain, and because they are very rarely seen with other members of their species, there is no name for a group of snow leopards. As said before, snow leopards only meet to breed. The fact that for the rest of the year they live in isolation means it's hard for two of them to meet up to mate, especially since they live in such large and desolate areas. To find a mate, females will spray to scent mark well-walked areas in an attempt to find another individual. If they are successful, they will greet each other with chuffing noises. Breeding takes place during late winter, when food is scarce, so then cubs are born during spring and summer, when there is plenty to eat. Other than mating, the only times multiple snow leopards are seen together is a mother with cubs. Snow leopards are exceptional hunters, and living in such harsh environments means they have to make do with what is there. This means they prey on anything that moves, from mice and marmots to Himalayan blue sheep and the most common prey, the ibex. These predators will also eat birds that are unlucky enough to nest or land in its way. Snow leopards are crepuscular, meaning that they are most active hunters at twilight, which helps massively when hunting. The paws that I mentioned previously also help when hunting by letting them pounce even when in thick snow, giving them an advantage when it comes to hunting in such an environment. Snow leopards were classed as endangered in the past by the IUCN, but that ended up changing when it was realised there are around 2,000 more snow leopards than first thought. However, there has still been a massive decline in snow leopard numbers over the past few decades. The main reasons for this decline is two factors, loss of habitat to cattle grazing and because of illegal hunting. It is thought around 20% of the population has been illegally poached in the last two decades alone. Snow leopard fur is incredibly valuable, coats for the rich made of multiple pelts can go for $60,000 and its bones are used in traditional Chinese medicine, which is completely ridiculous as you might as well use the bones of a house cat, not that you should. Ranching is encroaching on snow leopard habitats, so snow leopards will attack cows and goats, which means that farmers will shoot snow leopards in order to defend their livestock. Snow leopards live in a massive range spanning 12 countries, including Russia, India, Mongolia, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, and notably China, where 60% of the population lives. Snow leopards can live in massive ranges, with males in areas of 225 km squared and females 130 km squared, although they can vary greatly. However, this large area of land that snow leopards need is a problem, as areas of protected snow leopard habitats are not nearly big enough. Only eight cover enough land to hold 50 females out of a population of thousands. Snow leopards will walk and hunt all around their range, and male ranges overlap female ones so then they can breed, but ranges between two of the same genders rarely overlap. Snow leopards aren't actually leopards. The closest relative is the tiger. Leopards, lions and jaguars share a common ancestor that split from other cats around 4.3 to 3.8 million years ago, 
and it was thought before that all species in the genus Panthera split off at the same time, but tigers and snow leopards common ancestor actually diverged around 3.9 million years ago. Many attributes of the snow leopard supports this close relation to the tiger, such as their inability to roar unlike lions, leopards and jaguars, because of the split this makes sense. Due to the snow leopard's isolation, it is thought that there could be multiple other subspecies that have diverged over time due to speciation, but none of this can be properly verified due to just how rare and hard to observe snow leopards are. The few pieces of evidence that support the presence of subspecies are based off a few specimens and paintings in museums. There are many breeding programs all over the world in zoos and safari parks to help increase snow leopard populations. With well over 600 snow leopards in zoos taking part in the Association for Aquariums and Zoos Species Survival Plan, where individuals are specially selected to breed to keep the gene pool diverse and the species strong. <laughs> Captive breeding of snow leopards began in the 1970s when animals were matched with individuals around the world. In 1980 the Species Survival Plan was introduced, which helped zoos work with more and more zoos to produce a large population of snow leopards. By 1986, the population in North American Zood had more than doubled from 100 to 230. The population is still very small, however, which has caused many problems due to inbreeding. Snow leopards suffer from weak immune systems that can cause pneumonia. They also suffer from some conditions that are common with inbred dog species, such as hip dysplasia. New funding has been given to try and use more in-depth genetic screening to try and find the best individuals to breed in the future. Surprisingly, the future of snow leopards may be saved by Buddhism. There are around 81 Buddhist monasteries in the Tibetan Plateau, and 80% of snow leopard habitat is influenced by Buddhism. This gives Buddhist monks an amazing chance at saving the species. They run many education initiatives to teach about protecting snow leopards, and the Buddhist belief that you shouldn't harm living things. Patrols are also run from monasteries to monitor snow leopards and prevent poaching. The land that is patrolled are sacred areas dedicated to Buddhists, and these lands are much larger than the protected areas set out for snow leopards, so through their kindness and beliefs, real steps can be made to safeguard the snow leopard's future. Snow leopards are a kind of animal known as a keystone species, meaning they have a massively important effect on their habitats. Just like the well-known case of the Yellowstone wolves, if you were to remove them from their habitat, the ecosystem would undergo drastic changes. This is because without snow leopard predation on sheep, ibex and other grazing animals, the populations would grow too large. This would lead to overgrazing, which in turn causes soil erosion due to the lack of grass and plants holding it together, which could then cause problems to humans such as landslides, flooding, river redirecting and so on. It could also mean the end of many cultures and peoples who live in the mountains, such as the Tibetan monks, due to devastation to mountain ecosystems. It is therefore incredibly important that efforts to preserve this species are continued, and that poaching of snow leopards is ended quickly before it's too late for this remarkable creature.